Masada Head, and you're right, just using his strength and, and brute force to get out of harm's way. Clearly, at least from an upper body standpoint, do you feel like Mays is the stronger guy? Yeah, I mean, I think it's pretty clear that Mays looks to be the physically stronger guy. Uh, De La Cruz, though, dealing with that well. He put together a good plan. He's uh, attacking a lot, kind of dominating the ground portion of the night. But, you know, Victor Meza has a great team over there, and one of the things that Santino DeFranco does really well is he's a really good strategy guy, so I'm sure that his corner told him exactly what he needs to do to get this fight back on pace. Let's just see if he can execute it. It is Bellator Fighting Championships 2 here, the Mohegan Sun Resort and Casino. John Anik and Jason Chambers opening round. Welterweight clash here, Omar De La Cruz and Victor Meza. And De La Cruz once again has Victor Meza's back. Yeah, that's not a place you want to be with a guy who's... Uh, leans towards being a Brazilian jiu-jitsu expert more so than a striker. Right. You don't want to have him on your back. Creates a lot of problems. Now for Omar De La Cruz, really perhaps no one's done more to put mixed martial arts as a sport on the landscape in the Dominican Republic and a win here in the opening round of the Bellator tournament would just do wonders. I think not only for De La Cruz's career stateside, but for the sport in the Dominican Republic. Yeah, for Victor Meza being 9-0, I, I definitely think De La Cruz is handling him really well working on that rear naked choke. Meza really has to be careful here and control the, the wrists so that he doesn't get that right arm you see around the throat of Meza there too deep. You see De La Cruz trying to sink in a submission, but Meza again showing off the strength and, and able to avoid trouble, at least for the time being. Yeah, I mean, Meza looks like he's clearly comfortable. He's had guys on his back. I mean, people train and you get in every position you could possibly be in. Uh, one thing you don't want to do, though, is De La Cruz is crossing the ankles over uh, Meza there. If Meza throws his legs over the crossed ankles, he can actually submit De La Cruz while De La Cruz is on his back. He's a kind of work those hooks into either a figure four on the side of the body, or else he needs to uh, open it up. Well, that choke looks like it was kind of deep. I think De La Cruz is going to avoid the back and go into mount here. Oh, stays on the back. De La Cruz looking up at his corner for some advice there. De La Cruz has just been putting on a jiu-jitsu clinic, moving from position to position, and he's constantly attacking. That's one of the things that we haven't seen a lot tonight is guys that are just going, hey, I'm going to constantly be bringing the fight to you on the ground. You can bring it to me standing up, but I can be just as aggressive here on the ground, throwing up arm bars, triangles, moving in advancing position. You see him kind of pepper the side of Meza's head there to get Meza to bring his head up. He works that choke underneath a little bit. Again, Meza, though, really composed here. Well, I don't profess to speak Spanish, but just in reading the body language from the De La Cruz corner, I think they're looking for him to strike when he has his back to be active, not necessarily just look for the submission at all costs, but try to strike and do some damage while you have the opportunity. Yeah, one of the things that happens when you come from a jiu-jitsu background is that you tend to think only about jiu-jitsu. And, uh, you know, that's great if you're fighting that guy, but you don't really necessarily give as much punishment out as you could from some of those positions. De La Cruz, though, peppered him a couple times there. Yeah, being a little more active with his hands, and I, I really think that the Victor Mays of fatigue is becoming a factor here, Jason. He's the stronger guy, but just doesn't seem to have the gas he had in the first round. Yeah, I mean, when you have someone on your back and on mount, not only is it mentally exhausting and discouraging, but it's also very physically draining. Again, Mays are trying to do some sort of reversal there, but it didn't work as, as he continues to relinquish that back. Meza really needs to get control of one of those wrists there. Do what's called a two-on-one, hold one of De La Cruz's hands together, bring it over his head, and then spin into De La Cruz. That at least now he's uh, facing him from guard. De La Cruz still relentless working those rear naked chokes, and those are going to take a toll on you. We all know the three biggest keys, perhaps, in mixed martial arts, heart technique and cardio, and it seems, at least to my eyes, that Victor Mesa's cardio is eluding him a little bit here as we move below a minute in the second round. Yeah, I think that you had that, uh, that backwards. I think it's cardio, heart, technique. Well, Doesn't whatever matter. order you want to put them in, right, right. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't matter how much uh, technique you have if you're too tired to pull it off. Right. I mean, what do you think ultimately of those three is the most important? You think if you don't have your cardio, you don't have anything? Yeah, I think that if you don't have cardio, you know, you can't pull off a technique. So uh, the last thing you want to do is feel tired in a fight. And it's the one thing that you can really, really, really uh, control the most. Only thing being controlled right now, though, is uh, Meza by Dela Cruz. All right, one point away, one point. Dan Marigliata moving in there, taking a point away. Any idea what that was for, Jay? No, I, I, we're going to have to try to check that out in a replay. It was a 
point being taken away. I have no idea what that was for. All right, well, the pace slowed at the end of round two. We'll see what happens in the third and final stage.